Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today back to working over here on my horizontal boring mill. And uh, today's project, we're going to be scraping in the saddle that goes on this machine. Now, if you've been following along with my restoration, you know we've been doing a lot of cleaning up, painting, and inspecting my machine over here to, for wear, etc. And while my goal right now is to just kind of get the machine back up and going, uh, not really doing a total rebuild on it, as I had taken this complete saddle and cross slide off the machine earlier just to clean it up and inspect it and realized that it really wasn't in that bad of a shape from a scraping standpoint and decided, hey, as long as I've got it apart, I don't think it's gonna be too big of an ordeal to just go ahead and scrape this thing in be done with it, and then when I do come back to, to rebuild the rest of the machine, I'll already have this done, and I won't have to take this thing completely apart again and uh, go through all those steps that I've already done. So uh, we tested this with a straight edge in a previous video, and uh, it looks like it's hinging pretty good, which tells me that it should be real close for scraping in. That's what we're gonna hope for. And on this piece here, we basically got two sets of uh, ways, these are box ways, so they're not V-ways, they're more squared and flat across the top, which makes it a little bit easier for scraping as well. So game plan, this is the top, this is the part that the uh, cross slide slides on. You've also got some ways up underneath the bottom, kind of where the sawhorses are sitting, it's kind of sitting on where the box ways on that machine would be. My game plan is, is we're gonna start by scraping the top of this, uh, and then I will be using the gantry crane to pick it up and put it on the surface plate where we can make sure that this is flat, parallel, on one solid plane. We can actually use the surface plate to uh, check this with. Once we get this scraped in and flat, we're gonna flip it over. We'll start scraping in the two other ways on the bottom, and those two will be inspected over here on the surface plate uh, to make sure that they are flat and parallel to these up here. We'll have to use straight edges to actually scrape those in though because there's a little lip on the side so it, it won't lay flat on the surface plate like this top surface with will. Because this top surface will go flat on the surface plate, that's gonna be our starting point and we'll basically be working off of that uh, to finish it up. Probably in another video down the road, uh, we will actually scrape the cross slide in and uh, that will slide on top of this and we'll just use this as our master once because we'll know that it's flat over here on the surface plate, we'll use that to scrape it in. So let's get at it. First step here, uh, I've already got my surface plate cleaned up. Uh, I moved it in here where it can be next to where I'm working at. Uh, I've come in here with some Windex paper towels, cleaned that up really good. We're gonna be putting uh, blue ink on that in a little bit to actually uh, to be able to, to reference off of. But my very first step before I do anything else is I'm gonna come in here with my scraper and I'm, I'm gonna just do a blind scraping on these surfaces here. I know that the entire surfaces need to be scraped, so we're gonna put a crosshatch pattern on there. That will be our beginning point. I've always found that things tend to blue up better once they've been scraped, rather than if you just go straight off of a ground or a, an original surface, you'll get more smudges that way. So we're gonna go ahead and scrape everything, and then we'll start looking at the blue patterns and scraping those high parts down until we get these parts completely flat in parallel to one another. That's the game plan. Let's get in here and get it done. Take a look at it before we start. Uh, this is the original surfaces. They, again, appeared to be in pretty good shape. There are a little scoring in a couple places where some grit or something got up underneath those tables. That will be below the surface. I'm not trying to get those out. Uh, basically, they'll become oil retention grooves uh, for all intent purposes. You'll also notice the uh, little squiggly line through here on both sides. That is an oil groove that was ground down below the surface, and that's the place where the oil can travel around. So I'm gonna get my Biax uh, power scraper out and we're just gonna come in here and start scraping. And we're, like I said, we're gonna do a crosshatch pattern. We'll come in here at about a 45 degree angle. We'll go all the way down, and then we'll come back and go in the opposite direction and put a crosshatch pattern on both sides. I've got my scraper set here with a nice, fresh, sharp blade. I've got my stroke set on a really long stroke. We're kind of roughing in right now. As we get to finishing, we'll shorten that stroke up. But right now, I want to make a nice long stroke. Here we go. It's 
scraping you want to make individual lines and individual scrape marks. So I'm trying not to let these uh, lines that I'm going across overlap too much. And I'm moving fast enough that you get an individual scrape mark that's not really overlaying one another. And we're just going to go completely down the, the piece here and uh, come back and do it in the other direction at 90 degrees to this. Try and make a checkerboard. It's our first pass here. Now what I want to do is come back and we'll cross hatch it, go back in the other direction and uh, get a good pattern on there. And then we'll take it, blew it up and uh, start seeing what's high, what's low, what needs to come down and kind of come up with a game plan. We'll get this thing scraped and flat. Uh, why do we scrape guys? Uh, number one, I want to make sure that everything is, is flat. We're mo removing very small amounts of metal. Each scrape mart is a couple of uh, 10 thousandths of an inch deep. But by repeating it and going over these high spots, we can get those high spots down. And when we blew this up, you'll kind of maybe see it, what's going on. Uh, and the other thing we're doing is we're getting some little peaks and valleys on this flat surface. When I say it's flat, the highest highs are going to give you a nice pattern where you'll have individual points of contact between the two parts, but then there'll be lower valleys in between it. And that gives a place for the oil to get in there and really improves the ability of these parts to slide on one another. If you have two perfectly flat surfaces that like came off of a surface grinder, uh, they're going to want to stick together. Uh, when you put the scrape marks in there, the tops, the peaks are all in a flat plane, but again, you got those valleys in between, your oil gets in there and it really makes for a nice bearing surface for two surfaces to slide on one another, such as in machine ways. So, all right, we're gonna get in here and again, come across at 90 degrees uh, with the scraper. So there you go guys, after the first pass, we got a nice cross hatch pattern on here. And uh, what does that mean? Well, until we put it on the surface plate and blew it up, it doesn't mean anything. It looks pretty. It looks a lot better than what it did before. Uh, but the truth is gonna be in the bluing and that's what we're gonna be doing here in just a minute. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show this though because it is not an uncommon thing, although I don't think it happens a whole lot, but it has happened in the past. People will go in and just put a scrape pattern on an old worn out surface and tell you, hey, we scraped this machine in. And, you know, they're not lying to you. They scraped it. What good is it? <laughs> well, unless it's been checked and referenced, uh, it's not a lot, not worth a lot. But anyway, we're going to be doing the whole process here and making sure we got a good pattern because the proof is when we, we, we print it over there on the surface plate. All right, uh, we're going to get in here, deburr this, uh, get our surface plate set up, and we'll take our first look and really get an idea of what's going on with it. After scraping, I want to come in here with a stone and just kind of hit this and knock the burrs off of it. That scraper is going to raise a little uh, edge as it's going down through here. And when we go over to the surface plate, I want to make sure all those are knocked down and we don't have any high spots in here at all. So um, we'll just take the time here to knock those down real quick. I'm over at the surface plate now, and we're getting ready to blue this surface up uh, to use as a reference. Now, this surface plate has been calibrated. It's been checked out. I know that it grades a, um, a right now, and we've actually been doing some lapping to this table, trying to make it better. And I, and I know just from working with this plate that kind of this area over here grades double A, it drops off a little bit on this side over here. So we're gonna be kind of avoiding that. This plate is extremely flat. You know, it's uh, less than a 10 thousandth of an inch in uh, maximum deviation from its very highest point to its very lowest points uh, across this big plate. So, 
you know, really it's probably closer to about a half a thousandths or 50 millionths. Um, but it's, it's real flat is my point. And because of the size of what we're doing, uh, we're gonna be blowing up a fairly large patch of area on this uh, surface plate so that we can uh, fit it on there. Now, the idea here is, is that this ink is gonna be on here in a very thin layer. It's gonna sit on top of this plate, which is extremely flat. And when we put that uh, other piece on top of here and kind of move it around a little bit, what's gonna happen is, is this ink is gonna transfer from the plate to the part. And uh, it is going to transfer where the highest parts are on the part that touch it. And we can then take that off, take a look at where the blue points are. The blue points are the high spots. And we all know that we need to scrape those blue places on the part that we're working to lower it down. And what we're looking for, what we're shooting for is to have a uh, good area of contact all the way across the part. And you know, we don't want it to be a solid blue. We want it to have individual points of contact, individual points. And depending on the part that you're doing, the number of uh, points per inch can vary somewhat on a big part like this where you got a lot of surface area that's coming in contact. I'm not as worried about having, you know, 40, 50 points of contact per inch. If I can have 10, 20, that's really all I need because we have such a large area that is in constant contact. All right, I've got this blue pretty well spread out. I can see through it. I can see the plate through it, which is kind of what I want. Now what we're gonna do is come over here. We're gonna lift up the part and set it down on here and get a good print. Let me get my gantry crane uh, slung up. This part's way too big for me to pick up by myself and uh, we'll move it over here. When we get our gantry crane positioned over here and first step, we need to uh, flip this part over. Um, for it to go onto the surface plate, I gotta turn it 180 degrees. So I'm just gonna pick up on one side here. We'll pick the part over, we'll lay it down flat on the, uh, on the saw horses. And then we'll lift it again this time and take it over to the, uh, to the surface plate. All right. I'm gonna lower that down just a little bit right there. And I'm gonna get it leaning in the direction I want for it to drop down. And we'll just drop it down. All right, now let me get some rigging here to pick it up from the bottom and we'll carry it over to the surface plate. There we go. And we'll move the part over the surface plate. Just rolling the gantry crane here. Carefully lower this down. All right, we are on the plate. And now what I'm gonna do is I wanna just kind of rub it around. It's gonna transfer the blue. And I can tell from hinging that it's hinging on the, the back side, which tells me that's the higher sides. And with that, we'll pick her up and take her back over here and see what we got for a print. Okay, so 
Let's see what we've got. This actually doesn't look terrible. This is not anywhere close to where we want to be, but I see some very, very positive signs. First off, on this side, you know, we're obviously printing heavy on the ends, but light across the middle. But with that said, I can see blue all the way up in here. It's kind of intermittent, but you can see it. Um, it's, it's touching all along. So that is a sign, just like when we tested this with the uh, dial indicator and with the uh, straight edge, that it's not, I, I think it's gonna come in pretty quick is what I'm trying to get at. Now the other side up here, we've got a strong print across one, the back side. It's pretty much all the way across, a little heavier on this side. But again, there's blue marks all in here. You know, there's not a lot of points of contact, but there are points of contact all in here. So again, uh, I don't think it's that bad. So playing up here next is we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna scrape real heavily in the areas that are blue. I'm still in a roughing stage right now. So I'm gonna come in here and knock all that blue stuff down really, really hard, probably going both directions on it on both sides. Probably not gonna do much of anything, if anything at all, in these lighter areas. I'm just kind of gonna let those develop on their own. But I do wanna knock these high points down. And uh, then we'll take it over, print it again, rinse and repeat. That's the process. Let's get the scraper out and uh, get to scraping these high points. By scraping this, I'm lowering it down, not by very much, but we are knocking that height down a little bit. I'm going to come back the other direction and uh, just kind of do the same thing here. So second shot here after the uh, first round of scraping and bluing. So really, I guess it's been scraped twice, once blindly, once targeting the uh, high spots. And uh, not a huge change, but there's definitely a change for the better here. So on both ends of this side, my, my blue areas have creeped in a little bit. So that tells me I lowered those down, just like we were trying to, we scraped off those high spots. Again, I've got contact from one end to the other. You know, I want contact that looks kind of more like this from one end to the other. In the center, I've just got a little bit of here and there, uh, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. Same thing back here. Um, you know, this back side is a little bit high. Uh, I've got that lowered down a little bit more. We're actually printing out farther into this. So uh, we're just gonna basically do the exact same thing we did before, hit those high spots and uh, go through another cycle of this. Um, don't know how many it'll take, but uh, we'll keep going at it until we get it where we want it. So uh, I'm not gonna make y'all watch me this. I'll probably bring you back after we uh, print it next time so you can kind of follow along with the progress uh, that we're making. Well guys, that made a big difference in just that one little bit of a uh, cycle there we are getting really nice contact all the way up and down on this side now still a little bit heavy on the ends i want to pick up a little bit more in the middle here the back side um, when we first started we just had about a half inch strip down the back that was touching we're now probably three quarters of the way across we're still not quite touching on the very inside and still a little bit light down here we're touching down on the end uh, but got a big area here that's still not touching. So again, uh, just continue bringing things down um, and getting in here. I think it's also interesting. Let me zoom in and show you this. 
So I think it's just interesting to look. You can see in here the stripe pattern and that's on both sides. And we noticed that over on the, the main ways on the uh, machine itself when we were stoning it uh, before we did any scraping or anything else. And what that is, that's again, planar marks. This uh, casting would have been done on a metal planer, long, straight strokes, uh, kind of like a metal shaper, but it'd been a bigger machine. And um, you got those, every time that cutter moved over, it wasn't perfectly flat. It was pretty darn close, but you know, you got a little bit of high and a little bit of low in there, which is very typical way a, a planer uh, looks. This actually makes excellent ways because even though it's not like a scrape surface like we're doing here, you've kind of got those little high spots that the thing rides on and uh, you've got uh, oil pockets on either side. So a lot of times these older machines that were done on planers, they may have had very little scraping uh, done to them. Uh, but you can see the, the remnants of that metal planer, planer marks uh, 100 and something years later, which I think is just kind of neat. And it goes again to show you that this machine is not as worn as I really kind of was expecting it to be. All right, uh, we're going to get in here and do another round of scraping. I'll bring you guys back after this one and see what it looks like. So guys, two more passes made and uh, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. We're not quite there yet. But uh, after this last pass, I'm getting blue, although it's very light, all the way up into this area now. This seemed to be the light spot before and got real nice pattern going down that way. This side here, I've got, you know, honestly, it's probably fine like it is. Uh, I think my game plan now is, is what I'm gonna do is um, shorten up the stroke on my scraper and uh, come in here really concentrate on just the blue areas. Uh, up until now, I've really been doing rough passes, roughing passes every time, really just kind of swiping across the whole surface, just trying to bring levels down and to get contact throughout the part. We're there now, uh, we got contacted where, again, it's a little bit light down here, but we still have contact. So now, again, we're just gonna go in here and focus on those individual areas. So let me get my scraper out and uh, I'll probably just do one pass uh hitting off just hitting the blue we'll go uh blue it up i'll probably come back do another pass in the opposite direction on a shorter stroke and uh if it looks anything like it does right now we're going to be done so that's kind of the game plan let me get my scraper going all right so here you can see a little close up and again the game plan is we're just knocking down the blue nothing else I've got my stroke set pretty short here, so I'm really just hitting those areas there. I'm not, notice when this is down, I'm constantly moving it. You don't want to dig a hole. You want to make individual scrape marks. And I'm just trying to break that blue up and uh, knock it down and nothing else. It takes a little bit of time, but you really end up with a nice, nice uh, finish when you're done. So that's the goal here. All right, we will bring you back in a bit after I get both sides scraped. Wow, this is looking really good. So this is after that last uh, more light targeted scraping, more finished scraping. And you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to just quit right now, but I do want to go ahead and come back in here and just get that cross hatch. I, I did the short stroke on just a certain area or just in one direction. I want to come back and put the short stroke in the other direction just to have a good crisscross pattern on here. And, uh, but this is probably going to be the last scrape job or on this, uh, on this side. So, uh, this, this looks awesome. So let's grab the scraper and get in here and go at it one more time. So here, just like before, I'm going to come in. All we're going to do is just try to knock these, uh, blue spots down. 
that's the highest point that's on here. That's the part that's coming in contact with the plate and uh, bring it down. Hopefully pick up a few more points like in right here where it's a little bit light, right here where it's a little bit light. Honestly, this is good enough like it is, but we're gonna try to make it a little bit better. And again, get that cross hatch uh, in there. Now we'll just uh, rub it on the plate. It's amazing uh, the difference in how this thing moves around on the plate now versus the first uh, time I did it. I've got all those points of contact and it just uh, slides around effortlessly. Whereas before, it, even though it was flat, uh, it was dragging in some other places and it just wasn't moving around as easy. All right, we'll bring it back over here, flip it over. Take a look at what we got. I'm gonna to try to pan you down here and just kind of let you take a look at what my uh, final blew up looks like. This is on uh, one side and I'm real happy with that. Again, we got a really long piece here from end to end that uh, is gonna be supporting that piece. And we got plenty of area of contact in there. Um, I'm real happy with how this looks. Um, other side, very similar. I really can't get the camera over there very well, uh, but you get an idea of what the finished, uh, what it looks like here. And this is what you're after. You're looking after all these little blue areas are gonna be individual points of contact between the two surfaces uh, when you put them together. And again, this is the, the ways that the table is gonna be sliding on and uh, when we get ready to scrape that table, we'll actually blue these up. Since we know these are flat in a plane with one another, we're gonna blue these up. This will become the master. We'll use it like you would a straight edge or we'll use it like we would the surface plate to actually blue the other part up to mate it to these two pieces. Uh, so there you go. And just another look, this is after we wipe the blue off and you see it has that, what some people call a frosted look. And uh, it's all in a nice flat plane. This piece is extremely flat, but when I say flat, what I'm talking about is the tops of those, those blue marks that we saw a while ago. They're all in the exact same plane. It's actually a very rough surface up and down, um, but those individual points of contact, again, the tops, the peaks of all these little mountains in here form a very nice plane. They're all exactly in the same plane. And that's gonna be the area that comes in contact with the mating surface and we wanna have these lower areas between it again to uh, actually reduce the total amount of contact area between the two pieces so that they slide well and the oil gives a place for the oil to go. So that's the reason we scrape and uh, this is the end result. So I'm very happy how this turned out. Well, I think we got the first uh, surfaces on this saddle scraped in and ready to go. And uh, we're ready to start working on the next part. That's gonna be upcoming videos, of course. Uh, but things get a little bit more complicated, I guess you could say, uh, from this point forward. You know, doing this surface down here, we just had to get it flat on the same plane as our surface plate. Now I've got two surfaces on the bottom that kind of run perpendicular to that. This will be the parts that ride on the ways on the machine. And uh, we've got to get these scraped in so that they're flat, they're parallel to one another, in the same plane to one another, and in the same plane as the, uh, the plate down below it or what corresponds to these surfaces here. And uh, that was going to require a little bit of, of special um, geometry and some special measuring techniques and so forth like that. Um, but hopefully I haven't even checked it yet to see how out of plane it is. I've already looked to see the ways I think are similar condition to what we had on the, on the, uh, surfaces we just did, but I don't know how they are in, re in relationship to the, the reference plate. So we'll be checking that out in a future video and, uh, getting this surfaces scraped in as well, uh, so that we can get this, uh, machine back up and going. Uh, with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up comments greatly appreciated. Uh, big thank you to all the Patreon supporters out there and other supporters of the site. 
could not do all this stuff without you guys. Uh, and with that, guys, we will sign off and catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.